Hey friends, welcome back to Astrology Today. My name is Mel Rose. I'm here to share some astrology today. And this is a Deccan recording. Today begins the Deccan that is, that is the first of three 10-day segments while the sun transits in Aries. So yesterday the, the sun moved into Aries. We had our spring equinox. Today the sun and moon are going to be conjunct in Aries. And this is a, a very fiery initiative kind of feeling, right? The new moon is the time where we bring ourselves back into the present. We sort of consider what it is that we have and what we have yet to complete. We give thanks for all of it. And then we begin again to envision the future. This is the time for getting with ourselves, realizing what our intentions are, and then communicating our intentions to ourselves, to others, to the universe, so that we can, uh, so that we can then start to set goals and make plans, right? So this is a lot of fiery initiative on our side. And the moon is right now, not just conjunct with the sun, but it's also in Aries with Chiron and Jupiter. So good fortune is on our side. Healing, especially of old social wounds, is really uh, available to us at this time. And it's a really powerful time to be getting started on the things we want to take initiative on not just this month but in this year because Aries is the beginning of the zodiac where this is really our new year so those uh, those resolutions you set back in January, those New Year's resolutions, you said, I want to be better at this, I want to do more with this. And then perhaps, you know, you made a little, a couple of false starts because the the vibe just wasn't right. The energy wasn't there. It was too cold out. It was too dismal. It was just, a, it was a different, it was more earthen vibration. Now we're in fire. We feel active. We want to get moving forward. So this is the time to get started on those plans that you have for this whole year. Thursday, the 23rd, and a couple days from now, Pluto is going to move on into Aquarius. And this is such a big deal that I cannot overstate it, friends. Pluto has been in Capricorn for 20 plus years, just sort of, you know, knocking down the, the old constructs that we used to rely on, but that stopped working for us and, uh, and sort of transforming our attitude about those habitual uh, ways of being just um, on our own and also in culture, uh, you know, bringing about new ways of looking at our institutions and the structures we rely on for support and, and really transforming our approach to dealing with those things, right? So Pluto has been in Capricorn all of this time. You can see all the changes that we've been through if you just think back on the news and culture, but also in your own life. Um, and now Pluto is moving into Aquarius, and this is kind of like the dawning of the age of Aquarius, right? So Pluto brings transformation. Aquarius is really all about our, um, our desire for the support and uplift of all mankind. It's a very humanitarian vibe. It's a very big picture vibe, right? So, uh, you know, Pluto is going to be bringing transformation to how we collectively think about um, humanity, the equity of all people, and our desire for, for all people to have the support and uplift that they need. We realize that, you know, our, our liberation and our, and our support and uplift are intrinsically tied to the liberation and support of, and uplift of all people. So uh, this is going to be a really interesting com coming up 20 years. Now, this is our sneak peek. This is our, this is our ta first taste of Pluto in Aquarius. Pluto is going to spend some, some like two months in Aquarius this year, and then it's going to back back up into Capricorn. We're going to get a little bit more of that, uh, you know, um, crumbling of edifices and restructuring of institutions now that we've had a taste of Aquarius. And then next year, we're going to fly back into Aquarius. Anne Ortley co compared it to sort of like getting your hang glider, standing on the earth, because that's where Pluto has been, is standing on on Saturn, basically standing on that structure and stability for for 20 years, standing on the earth, getting your hang glider and leaping off that cliff and going for a flight, right? Because uh, is, is sat, because Pluto in Aquarius also is a Saturn um, is Saturn ruled, but it's an air sign. So it's really more about what we think. It's about the picture, what we perceive, and how we make our plans. So um, very exciting stuff, and we'll have lots of opportunities to talk about it. But you know, please let us know if you see any major important shifts in your life at this time, because we are in so many transitions right now. You know, Mercury moved on into it is moving on into Aries. Uh, Venus has moved on into Taurus, so it's right home and right at home in Taurus. 
Um, Mars is about to move on into Cancer next week, this week. And, you know, Pluto moving on into Aquarius. The sun just moved on into Aries. This is, this is a lot of transition and change. So let us know what's going, what's coming up and going on in your lives. Okay. Saturn, Saturday, the 25th, Mars does move on into Cancer after seven months in Gemini. Ooh, with this long, this long retrograde and Gem Mars and Gemini sort of influencing us to have to do things one time, two times, or to try to do two different things at a time, sort of scattering our energy. Now Mars moves into Cancer, and it's not really necessarily the most comfortable fit for Mars to be in Cancer. Cancer is a water sign. Mars is very fiery and direct, whereas Cancer is more sideways and indirect. So we're going to be in pursuit. A cardin you know, Cancer is a cardinal sign, so it is about initiating. But we're going to be in pursuit of our goals at this time in more of a sidewinding sort of way. We're going to we're going to be a little less direct and a little bit more. Um, uh, I want to say passive, but assertive, right? I, I want to say, you know, we, we're just going to sort of um, circle around to the things that we want rather than going straight at them, right? Um, and then Mars is also going to be a uh, quincunx to Pluto starting on Saturday, the 25th. And this is interesting because Mars, uh, you know, Mars quincunx to Pluto, this is initiative, initiative and this is power, right? So we're striving to power ourselves forward to what it is that we desire, what we'd like to have for our lives. So, and, and then quincunx is an adjustment energy. So we're sort of adjusting our active impulse, right? This sort of side winding way at this point <laughs> before it was sort of like trying to do two things at once or doing things again and again. Now it's like, we're going to do it once, but we're going to do it uh, slowly. We're going to make sure we have all of our decks in a row. We're going to keep things all in order as we get there, right? So we're adjusting the way we act around this new transformative vibe, Pluto in Aquarius, right? So power plus pur purpose, you know, Mars is in Mars is in a water sign now. Pluto is in Aquarius. So this is all new territory for us. And uh, that's going to be interesting to see how it go how it happens because we're, we'll have this sort of not passive approach, but this sort of um, indirect approach to achieving our goals. But our goals are still going to start to center around, again, Aquarian vibes, humanitarian vibes, the uplift of humanity, the support of the people in our communities and collectives, as well as ourselves. Then on Sunday, the 26th, Mercury is going to make a conjunction to Chiron in the sign of Aries. Okay, so uh, Mercury and Aries, very fiery vibe, a little a little growly, a little perhaps spiteful, or at least sharp of tongue, sharp of wit, right? So, um, and then Chiron is about, again, healing. Chiron and Aries is about healing those old social wounds of having been embarrassed or teased or put on the spot or made an example of. And so, you know, there's a, there's an element to this that's like, I've got to, I've got to get this off my chest, right? And it's a very direct way of communicating and saying, this is how I'm feeling right now. This is the problem I perceive and, and this is what I want to happen to fix it, right? So um, that's that's great. It's great to be able to be direct when you're trying to, to heal from situations. It's great to be in, it's great to be able to be direct when you want to, uh, you know, solve problems and the situations you find yourself in. But we want to remember right to uh you know think about how we are treating our, ourselves and our loved ones when we are speaking about how we want to solve our problems right because again mercury can be um so concise and direct under aries influence that it comes across as uh, as as a little um brash as a little uncaring and it's not that we don't care it's just that we feel really fired up about it and then monday the 27th mercury makes a conjunction to jupiter this is such good news in fact it just says good news coming in okay and it can be a really intense vibe like some really good news is going to come through it's an optimistic frame of mind there's good fortune we feel generous we have a lot of good ideas we can make plans that reflect these bigger ideas of what we can be do and have at this time probably based again on positive information coming in i'm really looking forward to that i'm waiting for some positive information to come in in my life Thursday, March 30th, Melrose's birthday. 
Mars trine Saturn. Now this is kind of a familiar vibe because Mars was trine Saturn a lot last year. Um, you know, especially during the transit in Gemini, during the Mars uh, retrograde, during the Saturn retrograde, and then they've both moved forward and now they're trying again, but they're in new signs right before Mars was in Gemini and Saturn was in Aquarius. Those were air signs. Those were about, you know, how we think, plan and communicate. And now they're both in water signs. So it's really about how we feel and what we intuit about our situations, right? So Mars is taking its little indirect circling approach, coming at things sort of sideways, right? And then Saturn is, it, it has moved on into Pisces. And so the sort of the, the structure has become, begun to sort of soften. We're, te we're testing, think of all the things that have sort of um, broken open, things that contain liquid, okay? That have sort of broken o open, busted, leaked, um, all of the rain that we've had falling, sort of breaking down levees, uh, you know, dams not working for us, or, or you know, uh, in California, like they're having to drain water off the dams for, for the first time in a long time, right? So what what's happening with Saturn in Pisces is that the strength of our vessels to channel the flow of emotion and intuition of, of that watery energy, the strength of our vessels is being tested, right? And if the strength isn't there, it's going to bust and you're going to have to rebuild a new, you're going to have to find a way to contain those emotions and intuitions in a stronger vessel, right? Um, so Mars trine Saturn, this is really positive energy though. It's like ideal possible functioning for getting work done. Okay. That's fire and earth that's that's um that's drive and our desire for stability our desire for security and support so uh it's really ideal vibes for getting for getting work done whatever it is you're working on it should be it should go really easily for you in a more emotional uh intuitive perhaps um you know sort of uh how do i want to say diffuse way right uh, moving through water, like taking initiative in water, that can be, that's an indirect kind of thing. You know, I was describing before how you can be trying to sort of push against the the flow of the water and how you have to sort of sidestep the, <laughs> sidestep the flow to try and make progress against it. So, you know, there's there's just a little bit more of a slowing down of this energy. The work will not uh, the work will not allow us to go ahead too quickly right now. Okay, so just um you know take your time. Make sure you're doing things right in the moment. Make sure it feels good. Make sure intuitively you're in the right space to be doing it. Patience and dedication. Okay, as we take care of this challenging business that's coming up, and work work work. So you know challenging business because. You know, we're right here at the beginning of the of the zodiac year. We have this new moon in, in, in Aries. So this is the beginning of the lunar cycle. Right. And uh, and, you know, we're not just setting intentions for to, for this today or for this week or month. We're setting intention for the year. We're setting intentions for the coming three years. Saturn in Pisces, we're setting intentions for the coming 20 years. Pluto and Aquarius, you know, uh, we're setting intentions for the coming uh, I think that's about a, a 30 or 40 day transit in Mars and Cancer. So, you know, uh, just think about the, the time frames that you're working here, working with here and understand that you are at the very beginning. OK, so don't so pace yourself. OK, don't get ahead of yourself. Don't try to rush ahead of things. You know, even if you think you see the future, you know, it has to be done. And you can like pre prepare things right to be ready for you when you get there. Just don't do it. Just work with what's, what you've got in the moment, with, with what you've got to work on in the moment. Make sure you've got it right. Again, make sure that it feels good, that intuitively you're in the right space, and then, and then you know, move on to the next thing. Uh, future tripping. So the next decan after this one will be the second, the second 10 days of the sun's transit in the land of Aries. And that will be represented by the three of wands, not the two of wands. Uh, so in the, in the future, Mercury is going to move on into Taurus. The, you know, uh, 10 to 12 days from now. And then Venus is going to move on gem into Gemini. So we've still got a lot of transitions ahead of us. We've still got a lot of um, sort of quick transits coming up. And I think at the end of April, we're going to see Mercury going to go, going to go um, 
retrograde for really kind of the second time this year. So uh, now I want to slip into a little bit of Tarot and just remind you that that first 10 days, this first decan of the sun's transit here in the land of Aries is represented by the two of wands. The two of wands, you know, is, a, is okay, so wands are fire element symbolism. It's about action, uh, taking action. It's about activity, uh, you know, and with this one, with the two, we're right at, right back at the beginning, right? Right back at the beginning <laughs> of the, uh, of the Zodiac year. And we're right back at the beginning of the, of the wands saga. So this is about planning. It's about taking first steps. It's about making choices and also sort of leaving our comfort zones behind and being willing to take a little bit of a risk, right? So this this is where we're at right now. We are uh, we are settling in today to uh, you know to to have gratitude for what it is we have, and then we're going to begin to imagine and invent the future, right? We're going to uh, unfold our intentions into goals, and on our goals we can make plans. We start to make, take the first steps toward those goals, those goals that represent the next year, the next three years, the next 20 years. We're just making our very first baby steps on them. We're making choices right now that are going to impact ourselves, our, our lives over the next several years, and, uh, you know, definitely stepping out of our comfort zone. So, you know, be careful, take care of yourself, do not rush ahead, uh, do not get in a hurry, <laughs> you know, practice patience, even when it's difficult to practice it, like Mercury in Aries. Uh, or sun in Aries, or even moon in Aries, it can be difficult to practice patience, but we really want to try to practice patience because uh, we're going to be taking some risks at this time. So we want to make sure safety is priority one. Correct? Correct. Okay. All right, friends, I think that's all I have to say about it right now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe the video, and I will catch you in the next one.